Welcome to selfdiscoverywisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Building Your Business right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Daphne Dulusi. We're going to be talking about a number of things. Uh, she is a filmmaker, a branding expert, a director, a producer, and so much more. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, being that brand expert, a successful business strategist with a remarkable track record in various creative fields, with international experience that she brings a global perspective to their work and incorporating diverse influences and cultural nuances into projects. Beyond her expertise in branding, she's a talented filmmaker, producer, and director. Her passion for storytelling and visual arts adds um, a unique dimension into the brand creations, allowing them to create captivity narratives and experiences that resonate with audiences. Her family holds a special place in her life and her deep family values inform the approach to her work. She understands the importance of connection, authenticity, building meaningful relationship, which she infuses into every project she undertakes. This perspective brings a warm, personal touch to her brand creations, creating a sense of familiarity and reliability. And, you know, on top of that, folks, she's got a podcast coming out very, very soon, starting one called The Intention of the Soul podcast. We're going to talk all about that as well. But she's a Libra. We're both on October 6th, and that's very rare to come across another fellow Libra. So we're going to try and stay in balance here today. <laughs> See, so back and forth. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Han. Thank you so much. What an introduction. I'm thinking, who is she talking about? <laughs> but I, that is me. <laughs> I, I love the fact that, you know, the family values, you know, that that core. I mean, definitely, you know, somebody when somebody comes from the soul, it's that divine wisdom. It resonates with the heart truth, right? And when you come from that space, not are you very clear on why you're doing it you're very clear on what you have to do because that's the compass isn't it exactly and and it is for me you know as a little girl I always had this really strong compass about love Mm. and that's um and also about actually being organized and getting things done and even as a little child my family around me used to tell me all sorts of things that to say I couldn't because I would say things like I fly with eagles I don't scratch with chickens and I was 11 (laughs) (laughs) so this family thing you know it started you know started at a very early age very early age and I'm a big family person yeah but the humanity is also our family yes you know yes Absolutely. And I think if we could look at it that way, you know, it's like you have a big family, you're not going to get along with everyone or agree with everyone. But the core respect of, you know, of their family. And if we could look at each other, you know, bloodline or not, and look at each other, I may not agree, or, or I may not like the path that you've taken. But why should I turn around and hate you? I can wish you well on your journey. May the spirit guide you. Right, but it, it, exactly, and also too. But I think what's wrong with a good discussion or 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 a debate? Yes, um, you know, and I I have this actually with my brother. We are so opposite. I don't know whether I don't know somebody swapped us and we'll look for. <laughs> I have that with my sister, so, chalk and cheese. <laughs> we are so opposite, <laughs> our opposite sides of the fence, mm-hmm. but we love each other very much, and we have such fun in challenge and debates. And then we say, well, you're entitled to think what you think. This is my view on it. Um, and I think you learn. You learn from family members or friends or people who are different to you. And that's the secret. I think it's it's a very wise thing to be a great observer. And I love um, Stephen Covey's saying, seek to understand first before being understood. Yes. 
Very wise, Stephen, very wise. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's also the other fact, too, that some people just may not get you. I have a sister like that, right? She kind of gets, you know, she's now telling me, oh, you know, you could do your podcast here. I've been doing it for the last 12 years, you know, and she's finally catching up to what I do. And we have completely opposites in, in you know, politics and view of life and everything. So what we've done and what I've channeled to do is find a common denominator, you know, where we where we do share the same values, where we can communicate, where we can be at peace with each other. Because if we step outside the other fence, because she's on completely the opposite side of fence in many things, it's not going to be seen or heard, right? So mm. I find that sometimes you can have a debate with someone. You can have that healthy conversation and respect each other's opinion and learn from it. But there's some mm. people you simply can't. So where mm. can you? have that communication and stay in that lane where you can enjoy that person, but don't expect them to understand who you are, why you are and what you're doing or what your philosophy is. They're not ready for it yet. Well, also too, you know, everybody's got free will and, it, you know, we don't, I, I, I'm always very respectful, you know, I, I, instead of trying to uh, prove anything to anyone, I take action mm -hmm. and I do stuff and I let my actions and, the things that I do in life be be my language mm -hmm. because and I I you know and I would be very quiet as well as I can talk a lot and very enthusiastic about lots of things in life but I can be incredibly quiet and um and sometimes you know when there's people that are very they have a need to to some people just take out take all the oxygen out of the room they they need to be the noisiest one or have everything or be and when there's people around that like that I just observe and just let them get on with it mm -hmm. and that's fine and the world is huge the universe is yes. huge there's room for all of us but I do think that it's wise to be a great observer mm -hmm. I agree because with I, you. And, and, and then when you observe things I think contemplation is also wise um my favorite place to contemplate is is in the bath <laughs> Yeah, so wash off the day and contemplate and, uh, you know, recycle my thoughts um, because we don't always know in that moment. It's good to contemplate. And, and I think it's actually a conduit. Mm -hmm. hmm? Water is a conduit. Yeah. It, you know, it absolutely is. It whether, absolutely you, whether you take that shower or swimming in the water or whatever, there's something about water that it's it's not just cleaning the body. You know, it's washing away things that don't matter it's actually feeding you you know a, a knowledge wisdom that you actually do need and so you know um i do eft you know tapping mm. in the shower mm. right and mm. i find it so impactful while the water is running down you know kind of washing away the the angst the the stress or the anything else and you know you're addressing that and then with the tapping you are then you know asking you know for the wisdom to come forth and i think uh there are so many beautiful things out there that are our support. We've got to find where that little safe haven is that we can decompress exactly. and embrace. Exactly. And that's the thing. I think it's like I always say to people, give yourself what you need to succeed. Mm. But this contemplation thing is like really serious because we are so bombarded with messaging everywhere and so many distractions. I do notice that humanity is speeding up but having less and less time just to be just to be and that can be even for 10 minutes but that's where you know there's lots of choices around us and I think it's about finding a place in your busy day to do something divine so whether it's tapping in the shower contemplating in the bubble bath <laughs> or whatever it is or or even you know this is my sound crazy to say, but sometimes when I'm just overloaded with stress, work, or whatever, you know, if I just clean the kitchen or scrub the oven, by the time I've done it, it's just like I can put the world to rights. It's something <laughs> that I just stop thinking about everything, let it go, and actually physically do something. It's magical. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, as you can imagine, I've got a very shiny oven. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you know, for me, it's the grandkids. I am actually yeah. moving closer to them at the end of April, um, where I will have them at least one or two days a week, and they'll be 10 minutes away from me. And it doesn't matter what's going on or how overloaded I am and all the things I've got to do. I pick them up, put them in my arms, and, you know, that's it. I am with them. I am so totally present with them in their little world. And then when I come out of that, my heart is full. You know, my heart is so oh, full. I've, I've taken a beautiful cosmic deep breath and then I can come back to what I need to. And I'm calmer and clearer. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. And I also, um, I think, well, if you're lucky enough to have children, if you're lucky enough to have grandchildren, not everybody wants no. children. No, and not everybody some, should, you know. It's not no, have some, to. Some, yeah. <laughs> no, no, and it's absolutely okay what, whatever you are out there doing with whether you with your thoughts, whether you, you want to parent or not. But I think those who do um, and we choose the path, I think it's a delightful thing. And people always used to say to me, oh, when you get your first grandchild, you're going to love them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sure I will because I adore my children. I've got mm -hmm. three and they're all my best friends. Um, oh, when I first met my grand little baby, the first one, I didn't only love him like incredibly. I loved life like a yes. hundred times more. It's yes. just like, oh, and I've turned into this uh, <laughs> this woman who, you know, that I'm not trying to save the world, but I do a lot to impact the world uh, because I'm so driven and motivated for these beautiful children. I 100% yeah. agree. And, you know, it's very hard to describe to people what being a grandparent is opposed to being a parent, unless you're a grandparent, mm -hmm. then you get it. Exactly. I, I waited, you know, to be 66 to have a, a grandchild. And then finally, I have two. Uh, one just turned three. One's turning one this coming month, and Aww. it's and it's like holding them. And I think what it is, we're not responsible for twenty four hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. We're there to absorb and look after them when we look after them, be with them, and it's that observe them. How much do yeah. we learn from our grandchildren? Exactly. Right, just the simple joy of of their play or being engrossed in something, the silly beliefs that we've forgotten to be, right? All these yeah. wonderful things, and I think there's so much to learn from just being still and observing. Whether it's children, whether it's puppy dogs or cats, whether it's nature and the wind blowing through the trees or ocean washing up against the shore, find Absolutely. a place to be still. <laughs> also, I think with them, with children especially when it's you know. It's a beautiful thing. But the, what I really, really notice is the eyes of children, well, especially my children, but also people. And they say uh, the eyes of the windows of the soul. But there's something very beautiful looking into the people that you love into their eyes and take the time to look. Um, it's incredible because, oh, you can just see so much. Yes. You know? I'm going to be shameless here because this is a, um, an awareness and a fundraiser, but I have a book here, which is an anthology with 14 people join me in this book about what we need to do to change the, the system around raising our children and how we need to support parents and how we need to support our children and where, they're, where they need to be in the future. Uh, and our current you know, schooling and, it, and society isn't doing that. And it, you know, it's our forgotten children. And it's about that. It's about... Um, we're in a lot of disarray at the present moment and a lot of people are in self-discovery of who are they, where do they fit into this world. But And a lot of people are still carrying wounded children with them, the child inside. And we look at where we're at right now and I feel these are our leaders in the future, but they are lost. They are so lost, they, you know, we've let them down. And so we really need to go back to the beginning, our young children and the way we raise them, the way we support them, the wisdom that they are, instead of trying to conform them. I think an awful lot of people's problem in life is this, you should, you must, you've got to do it this way. You only count if. And we're crippling society in that way, aren't we? Mm. Well, my take on it is it's just how I brought up my children was through inspiration, not domination. Yes. yes. And also there was like, you, you know, the the picture behind me says a lot about 
kind of my values. Um, Pink fluffy clouds and a beautiful moon. (laughs) Well, the thing is, my one of my assistants, he said, "Oh, this that really sums you up, Daphne. That background." But for me, it's about uh, the creative mass and it's about the soul. And when you have a child, they come into this world with their own creative mass and their soul. And as parents and guardians and guides and teachers and people who inspire and leaders, it's about actually helping people actually be who they are. Let yes. them use this, their skills. Let them talk, hear them, let them express um, and, you know, I've brought three children up very, very, you know, they're all doing great. So that must be the test. Um, but the thing is, is I, I, I think it's so important to to let people be, you know. Uh, my mum, she's been gone now nearly 20 years, but she always used to say, feed them, love them and leave them alone. And I think that was a great thing. It's just like, you know, feed their souls, feed them with food, love them. You know, and, and I also think guiding the children with kind of like tasks, not chores, but tasks where they can actually learn and feel good about a sense of achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think on a very serious note, instead of pre- preaching how people should bring up their children, I think it's about looking at after the child inside yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I And I think that sometimes, you know, we life isn't perfect people aren't perfect situations can be very challenging but you know what we know ourselves better than anybody so why not be your own mum and dad you know yeah give yeah. yourself a good talking to or give yourself what you need to succeed and you don't need to be telling anybody stuff just make your little lists and do that that is so powerful and I see it in many of my clients that sometimes you can see a discombobulation in their spirit and it's not to criticize them but when you kind of scratch the surface a little bit you can find very unhappy children or wounded children or traumatized children um but they but they're amazing human beings yes so and and it's acknowledging that inner child isn't it is it you know yes i've got you i hear you i'm here for you right exactly and i think that yes and i think a lot of people i call it outside in living yes i think you it's about living inside out with absolutely it's about listening to your heart and soul Mm -hmm. giving yourself a time and even when you've got no time you can do it on the loo or in the shower (laughs) yes exactly (laughs) and you know being being you know pausing to be present is is essential you know like people don't understand how much you get from nothingness from doing nothing right because because you need to kind of switch off from all the attachments yeah yeah and, you know, in doing just absolutely nothing, um, I'm I'm moving close to my daughter. They bought me a home. That's how lucky I am. Um, but I've been driving between cities to go and see them. And it's a beautiful mm. drive. But, you know, my I'm on automatic. My mind knows where I'm going. So, you know, mm. that is one part of me that is driving. And I'm just like looking at the leaves and looking at the water and looking at this and that and just allowing allowing whatever to come running through my mind and just no dictating oh, I've got to do this I've got to do that no just I'm mm-hmm. with the trees on the light on those leaves I'm with the water exactly. shining over there you know well that's a beautiful thing to do but not everybody is wired like that or capable no. of it it takes but time. I think <laughs> well I think a good way to actually give example to many is to 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 think of um, a champagne fountain, and you know those glasses where that they're all piled up and they're empty, and then suddenly this sparkling champagne comes drizzling down, and I think that's the thing <clears throat> that is a wonderful way to think about that. Empty all your glasses, mm-hmm. and stack them up, and because they're empty, there's inspirational new ideas can mm. come tumbling down. Yes. You know, but if you've got one kind of like cup of coffee or tea there filled and it's been there for for days or months, how can anything new or fresh come in? You have to empty yourself. So you can do that by detaching. But but I think it's about doing life on purpose. Mm. Uh, And I think it's about taking control of your head, your mind. Yes. And say, okay, mind, thanks a lot. 
thanks for your subconscious and your conscious stuff, but actually I have something to say here. Yeah. And give yourself, you know, mental, spiritual, emotional, physical stimulation and fill yourself with the things that um, make you happy. Like, um, And that actually make you tick some people it might be food some people it might be physical stuff or reading or conversation or touch whatever it is but the thing is if you don't tune in and dial into you how are you going to feel good exactly nobody nobody comes like i always say i always said to my children if you think life is going to come and the big lover is going to come the husband the, the wife the job the house if you think it's just going to come you'll be standing there freezing right <laughs> so, no no one's coming it's up to you to get up and go and get to get up and create yeah and you know a lot and, of people uh, think mass manifestation is like an amazon delivery you know that it's just going to oh i manifest it so it's going to be here no i mean i'm very much about the soul wisdom the universal wisdom and it could be god universe spirit energy source whatever you wish to call it and that it comes through in its wisdom and it gives it to your heart in truth. And your heart <laughs> gives it to your spirit into action, which mm-hmm. then ignites the mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. Extracting what it is you need to do in this moment to use this wisdom. Right? And exactly. If we, if we can get out of our head, a lot of people are so in their head. Yes, but what if? Yes, but what if? And the soul mm-hmm. goes, yes, but what if? And we don't give the soul enough volume. Yeah, that's absolutely, I would agree. But there are a lot of people out there that are full of um, toxicity. Yes. And and the reason that that is, it's from all sorts of things, whether it's food, relationship, or their chemical imbalances. And it, can, and it happens to all humans. Um, but the thing is, sleep is so important. Yes. And, and I and I think to some and also some people they worry a lot mm-hmm. um, and some people dramatize a lot <laughs> uh, and I always uh, but I go front line head on into the problem so the thing is um, I I never get so inspired all the time <laughs> which I am. Um, but with my partner of six years now, he comes from a very dark past. So I was it was like an enforcement of you will look at this darkness. Um, and then what I've done is I've looked at so much darkness over the last six years, um, only to only to find that when you actually go through darkness head on, it actually um explodes into light. Yes. And I think that this this is what I would encourage people to do, whether they're having a tough time in their business or relationships or life, is not put their head in the sand, but whatever that problem is, face it, pick it up, make that call, have that cha- challenging conversation, you know, because we actually don't know. And that's where the ha- higher powers do come in and guide the voices do you just feel it and also do it's um if you're not sure about that practice on smaller things yeah but it's so important it's so important actually just to kind of walk through the difficulty and call it out i I 100 million percent agree with you we have to go through the process you know it's discovering our courage discovering our strength discovering our abilities and through that we actually discover our meaningful purpose but we have to be willing to take the journey i was lost for about eight years in my life and i was in that darkness and i could see the light and it was inviting me but i felt safe in the dark and that's because i was going through something rather tumultuous at the time when i did come out at first i was blinded by the light and i felt the shadows were chasing me wanting to pull me back and then i realized those shadows weren't shadows anymore they were contouring and giving shape to the light i can now go back into that dark at any time for i am the light and I can shed light on that darkness in order to see clarity. And it's only because I was willing to walk forward, willing to discover, willing and allowing the universe to show me a path. And a great deal of it is surrender. You can't control this in a sense. I'm going to control my every step. It, the control comes in the surrendering to allowing yourself to go through, to feel and experience, to release, to acknowledge, to discover, and all of that. And when you get to the other end, 
it's absolutely oh my god I've been sending myself short for so long yeah I could have done this a long time ago (laughs) yeah I, I describe it as I say life is art in motion. Yeah. And when you have a masterpiece, you have light, dark, and shadow. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a beautiful piece of art without those things. Exactly. And that's the thing, as that's I think that's my analogy for kind of, you know, walking a real life. Um, and it's and also if you watch the nature as well, and you you look at the how, how, you know, you've got sunrise, you've got the day you've got twilight where well, you've got sunset and twilight now often in that those twilight hours the world can look so beautiful mm-hmm. and then it suddenly falls into darkness and that's another thing i would encourage all humans to actually you know learn about nature not necessarily be in it and not know anything about it or even eat things from the earth and we are a part of everything mm-hmm. and not even understand it's just like when you go into nature, how you learn to sail a little boat, even in a pond, mm-hmm. or whether you're on it, whether you're um, you know what to do with food or understand how how to do things. When you learn all of that, it just connects you to everything that is wonderful. Yes, you know, absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah. why are, why do we have four seasons? You know, things come to an end so that they can become anew. And we have seasons exactly. in our own life. We have chapters well, it's, that come it's to all, an end. It's all teaching. It's all we've got this fantastic universal school all around us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you have to kind of like look. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the blinkers off, right? And it's all about our own soul and conscious growth. Everything that we are doing as human beings is for. Uh, to ignite our consciousness to a higher level of understanding. You know, we are only Mm. scratching the surface on soul and spirit wisdom and what it actually means. And I think a great deal of our technology that's coming into the world is to free us up as human beings on certain things we do to allow us to rise up to that higher consciousness in being who we're meant to be. Well, I think the thing is it's about... To take it down to a very simple, practical level, is that to remind people that they will never know how wonderful they truly are Mm. unless they take those steps forward. Yes. And the thing is, that's what um, I'm going to quote my mum again. She always used to say, oh, Daphne, you always see the good in people. You shouldn't see the good. There's other, you know, people have shadows. And I, I would never listen. And I just carried on seeing the good in people because i know ultimately in their soul that's what it is there's only love but that's your gift that's your gift mm -hmm. because you see the good in people you know how to show them how many people just don't know what's inside of them right because they've been living the should and the expectation of the outside life so your gift is to show them how beautiful they are on the inside and to bring that out why well, isn't what I spend a lot of time doing in my daily activities is is helping people unprogram toxicity and negative learning to trace their authentic divine self and bring forward their skills. Um, and this is the one and the way I, I do that in many mediums, but the strongest medium I do that is in brand creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And there's so much soul brand creation that's why i created intention of the soul podcast yes yes (laughs) it's a lot about branding but it's about humans and it's about creativity well that branding is your statement isn't it right branding everybody has their personal brand and it's their value exchange yes Yes. it's it's also reciprocity and that's a word you know some people say what does reciprocity Mm -hmm. mean and i say well it's good to look it up but it means you know a, um, a meaningful exchange of good value and it's got so much light in it that word and that action um, because there's a lot of people that measure things. That's right. That's wrong. I'm not giving that. I'm not doing that. What's in it for me? So if you get into those places, which sometimes, like if you if you're a lawyer and you're 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 actually writing a contract, okay, go yes. be analytical. Yes. But when you're with another human, you could be missing out on so much joy from yeah. that person. And it's just take a little step of kindness each way. Oh, boy. 
lighten up right for a start yeah. lighten up you know everybody makes everything so heavy um and you know gosh you know caring and kindness you know that when you start to care you you become kinder and when you're mm. kinder you have more compassion and when you have mm. more compassion you step more into love right but exactly what does it take to smile at someone really and how much how much could that make that person's day who's having a bad day Yes, but the thing is, it, I think, I think. well, I know that everybody has so much goodness into them. But the thing is, I think it's about you have to make sure you're not discombobulated. Yes. I love that word. I know, right? too. You don't hear it very yeah. much here in North America. Yeah. I love and it. Many, <laughs> and many people are discombobulated, but they don't realize it. Yeah. But when they start to listen to their own words and their venting and their frustrations – or their comments, and they just write them down, then they can see, oh, perhaps something's missing. And you know what? It's okay to to um, find good people to help you. You know, because we can't always see ourselves. We can't always know if we're discombobulated. We can't always know if we could do our business better. Um, and today with a, a client, um, they're very, very, very special person and so capable. Um, but I got very strict with this person. I said, um, no, you're not going to do that now because you're selling yourself short. You've got one hour to do this. And that's where your money pot is. Well, you should have seen their face. Anyway, <laughs> after 45 minutes, they were laughing, giggling, saying, oh, why didn't I do this years ago? Why couldn't I find this years ago? And I said, well, look, you found it now. So let's just get on with it. Exactly. Um, That's the point, isn't it? You've got yeah. it now. And I think that what people don't understand about branding, everybody thinks it's like just branding your business. Now, how many times do I interview people? I look at their site and I look at their logos and I look at everything else and then I meet them and I go, nothing about that represents you. You've hired someone to do something that very, very nice. But where are you in it? Where's the essence exactly. of you in it? And that's the thing about branding. It's got to represent something of who and what you are. Well, it depends on what, from what perspective you're coming in brands, from brands. Because there are a lot of like what I call digital agencies where they're very large, they're very expensive. Yes. And they have their, their processes and all their departments. So and that's a big deal that has to be paid for. So what happens there, authentic, authenticity goes. Uh, now, I know I'm the most unique brand person in the whole world, and I know that. And the same as my, uh, there's only one Daphne DeLucci in the world, because where I start is from the authentic self and the yes. soul. Yes. Right? So we all have a soul identity. It's a soul DNA. Yes, but we all carry our gifts um with us mm -hmm. we have it in our soul but the thing is as a human we can be learned we can train to do things mm -hmm. but i've seen it over and over and over again i've tested this for over 30 years i really have right across the world in so many different forms and projects and the thing is every person has something absolutely amazing. And every human is a part of God's code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And that's why when you when I when you find these dream teams, it's just like you've got these kind of like beautiful pictures. And maybe that dream team is only going to do a project for three years. But then it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's one beautiful project, three year project, all the different parts, which are absolutely perfect. And then you can take it apart and you can do another one. But I do believe that's how the creator has designed it. So not one person holds a whole code. code. Right. It's about right. humanity, collaboration. It, not one person is meant to have the whole code. It's too much burden yeah. on one person. The whole exactly. beautiful thing is that I, I, I draw the analogy to an orchestra. So we're each in discovery of what our instrument is. And we learn how to play it the very best we can, and we can play it beautifully as a solo. But when we come together as an orchestra, each one of us in our own strength, and we play harmoniously together, look how we transcend that music and that exactly. message, right? So it's important that we know what we represent. And then when you're building that team, they're the exactly. other piece in the orchestra, right? Because we want okay. to be in harmony. 
Exactly. And I think it also goes with kind of then looking at groups and how do groups function. And when you take the analogy of an orchestra, then you've got um, the wonderful guy with the stick. And I, that's who, I feel that's who I am. You know, I can mm-hmm. make all those notes in the orchestra. So mm-hmm. I can make the sweeter ones sweeter, the dramatic ones more dramatic. Yeah. And the thing is, there's different archetypes in this world. We all have different jobs. And but it's delicious. It's just also wonderful when you can actually surf in your consciousness and surf in, you know, um, creation and co-create a big buffet. You know, it's a huge party. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And you're not going to partake of every single ingredient of the buffet. But well, you don't need to either. You don't need to. That's the beauty of it. And you're not offending anybody by not partaking of that dish, right? It is, yeah. it, but it, it all of it will get eaten because it's delicious. And, you know, mm. everything has an energy signature. And when there is positive, loving energy in something, it fortifies everyone. So mm. in our brand, in our presence, in the way we present ourselves, that essence of why we're doing it, whom we're doing it for, because we're all contributors. And I think the big thing to ask people is, why are you doing it? And if it's, well, with fame and fortune, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. You will not succeed. But when is it because I'm driven to do it? I'm compelled to do it. I love doing it. Then you've got to do it. Yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. But with the, my practice, I see many different souls show up in many different ways. And then some people, they come on a journey of rich and famous and famous. And then in their journey with me, they find out that perhaps there's something else that's yes. more fulfilling. Yes. And then there's somebody that doesn't want to be famous, but finds that actually it's their dharma too, because they've got a very strong method. Well, they, they've got a very strong um, chakra and very uh, throat chakra and very, very high level um, communication skills. So that all these souls are really, really different. But there's one problem that I see with branding and people, no matter how lovely they are. And even I also see with other colleagues from other agencies, they have the same thing, which is you really need to take your glasses off. It's too many people to try to create brands that they like. And what a brand is, it's not about you. It's what you can do for other people. Mm-hmm. So you, if you like, for example, yes, I'm loving the pink and enjoy my background, but I'm not putting that on other people's branding right. because I like it. And you get this over and over again. You'll get um, you'll get Debbie saying, oh, but I like blue. And then you'll get Robert saying, oh, no, I couldn't do anything else but apart from burgundy. That's my colour. And then I have to tell them very, very nicely, it's got nothing to do with them. And that's being selfish. And it's about opening up to an expansive mind and what real branding is about. Um, I have many people that kind of pull amazing faces at me, but I love it. And I am mostly fearless. I'm respect. I'm respectively. I've got respect for some fear that you have to have in this world, but mostly I'm fearless mm. when it comes to creativeness and also um, helping people heal, helping people transcend, transform, um, and to actually, you know, really improve their life and their business, and for get for them to get what they need right. in that moment. So, you know, yeah. there, are, there are people that, you know, specialize in branding and the person comes to them, they have a chat and they create a brand. What you're doing is getting in touch with their soul, bringing out their soul essence, the, the essence of who they are and what they're doing. And then the branding comes as that representation of what they're doing and the invitation to whom they are offering it to. Well, it's a very interesting process. And I have to say that everybody is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, But in my practice, there's space for them to be themselves. I don't have like one methodology that I stick on someone. But I'm going to give you um, an an example of one amazing guy. And um, he was called Craig. And Craig thought that he was an inventor. Um, So he had like 13 inventions so I had these long list of inventions and um, he was very serious. He didn't smile much. He didn't look up much. Anyway, a year later, 
he doesn't talk about himself as an inventor. He's got kind of an energy energy management company, and he's kind of he's got what we've got going on there in his website. It's guardian of the sky, guardian of the sea, and guardian of the land. Mm. And he's doing incredible things with um with carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And already we've made just creating the brand. We've actually had an impact on carbon footprint. Wow. So. So now what um he what I've got him, he's got um he's gathering other guardians who do wonderful technology and energy and energy resourcing. And he's also got a monetization model where he's actually making money. So instead of having a pile of dusty old vent inventions where he'd spend a trade he'd spend a fortune on trademarks. Mm -hmm. Um, all sorts of marketing, things like that. I mean, it, it would just put huge ball and chain on his, on not only on his legs, but on his arms and his neck. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, and when I, on the day when I said, no, we're going to turn this upside down. We're not going to do heavy lifting up. We're going mm -hmm. to do brilliance from the top and we're shining down. And now, you know, he doesn't even, he's not interested in the inventions <laughs> because he, he realised, he said, he said, this is like amazing and uh, this is a miracle and it's all coming together and it's all real and it's real. And I said, well, of course it's real. But that's the thing is also I'm I'm a I'm a real professional. Mm. I know how to do things so I could do a lot of heavy lifting for people. Mm. Um, and then when we're going through all the processes and the builds, then their soul starts to sing and dance yes so it's not like i'm going to find your soul first and mm -hmm. then we'll do it mm -hmm. it's not like that it's a it's a lovely a lovely process of, of discovery of, of, you have discovery and creative mass mm -hmm. building yeah. build, building building things that work and function and having the graphics and the artwork that tell the story in three seconds mm. and that you know that's the thing isn't it is um we see things from a certain perspective of our understanding, our comprehension, but when somebody else comes at it from a different angle and it's like, we've, I've never thought about that. I've never, I didn't even think people saw it like that. And that's what we need. We mm -hmm. need somebody to see things from a different angle, see things from a different point of view, because we mm -hmm. get too bogged down in what it means to us that we don't mm -hmm. always know what it means to everyone else. Well, the thing is my background, I've studied all my life, um, I've studied humans and design all my life. And I was for 28 years a design and builder. So I went right through the world and I was drawing buildings with a CAD design, drawing the buildings, the layout, designing the furniture, having it made. I had a soft furnishings manufacturer at one point. Um, and I went right through Europe building high rise office blocks and designing the people and the businesses inside them. So the thing is a lot, there's a lot of psychology and branding and design and build. So when you go, and also the brain is amazing because the brain will, will look for things and do things naturally. Like for example, I remember one shop that I did a makeover, their takings went up in the first week afterwards, 27%. Wow. And they said, how can, how did you do that? I mean, mm -hmm. you just put some lights in and move things around. Mm -hmm. I said, we have to understand where humans flow, how they flow, yes. how they feel, what they yes. see. Yes. Right. So that flow of energy. Uh, so the, the fluidity is so very important, isn't it? It's we're also programmed. We're hardwired as humans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a lot of, um, a lot of professional experience in, and I, I say I have 12 super powers. So then I bring that into the brand process. Um, and I think this is also, but I know this is why I'm very, very different to an average branding digital agency. Um, but then going into film, it's exciting mm -hmm. because I get people in the studio. I don't even use a script. I've got an art. I've got an artful way that they just bring them to life, and then they've got their their branded content, and they say, "How did you get that out of me? I didn't even see I could do that, you know." And I and I, I love it because it's your magic it's, wand. It's magic wand. Well, you know how to do it. Nothing, <laughs> there's no. There's nothing more satisfying. Yes. Then people kind of looking at themselves, and it's a bit like the ugly duckling and yes. the swan. Not that any of my clients are ugly right. ducklings; they're not. They're all fabulous. 
But even, I mean, I've even had those moments myself in my evolution growth as a, as a human, as a woman, as a mother, as a person, whatever thing. I've had moments when I realised that I thought I was a little ugly duckling. Yes. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, you're not an ugly duckling. You're actually a champion dancer. Okay. But because of I'm very humble, it takes me a while to go, okay, award-winning designer. Well, who gave you award? What's that mean? Yes. <laughs> but you have these moments of going, okay, I am a swan. So I'm going to be a swan now and I can swan down the lake, right? And hopefully find other swans to swan around with, right? Uh, and that's a beautiful thing. So people can actually see their beauty, see their potential yes. and go on their wonderful journeys. I think that's what, and this is what self-discovery wisdom is all about. It's about people who offer services like you do to help people in their self-discovery. Um, you know, we have yes. a, a book coming up in the fall. It's about to um, go into invitation to coaches where it is actually coaching your self-discovery. And it's going to be a series of coaches and each what they do in helping people in their self-discovery, whether it's health, business, or just life or heart, heart and soul. We're all in discovery of who we are what we're here to do and um and whom it has an impact on and when it does have an exactly. impact you can see someone's life change you know like mm. somebody suddenly kind of the light bulb goes on and they start to see things differently because we mm -hmm. limit ourselves in just the human aspect of living we live it uh, limit ourselves all the time there you mm. can't do this no don't do that you know fear gets in the way i believe in common sense fear don't put your hand in the mm -hmm. fire. Don't walk in front of the bus. Take mm -hmm. your common sense fear. Instead of being afraid of the unknown, look at it as wonderment and as exploration. Let your common sense fear travel with you because that will keep you out of trouble and keep you safe. But if we don't open up to that wonderment, we're always going to live in limitations. And we're mm -hmm. so beautifully flawsome and unlimited when somebody weighs that magic wand and taps us on the shoulders and shows us who we really are. Well, I think... What is wonderful, as a little girl, I always saw this vision in my mind's eye and it was a world with a with a, a net over it with lots of sparkly points on interceptions of the net. And I used to dream about this, this graphic, or it was even moving. And I just never really knew what it was. But when I started to grow up and really get into what I was doing, I realized what that was. And I thought, oh, these are all my clients all over the world. And I'm going as fast as I can to turn them all on, like lights, because they're turning other people yes. on. Yes, yes, like the, the therapist. Yes, yes. yes, like the guy with the energy, the woman who's uh, um, who's fighting against um, sexual child abuse and stopping that. And, oh, my goodness, I do all sorts of deep things. Um, also, what else? Oh, yeah, like like one woman, she she had her husband left her. She was left with nothing. She didn't have any money to do any branding. But we raised some money from um, a local government, had a, a, like an initiative going on, and we, we got the money for that. She turned over her first million this uh, last year, and that was 18 months in. Excellent. Like, and Excellent. now she's doing so much to help people. And then uh, uh, Project 9010, um, um, she, her first talk, um, raised £266,000 for children in need. Oh, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So, you see, but so that's what you thing, just need somebody there. So, you know, because so many people, I would love to do that, but I'm just one person. Well, oh, if you become the inspiration, you become the invitation. Right. And so many well, people you know, don't, you know, don't let themselves to be, you know, to inspire, inspire yourself. You know, yeah. isn't well, it wonderful when somebody discovers what they yeah. can be and what they can do because they took well, the chains off? Yeah. Well, there's a cut those that does with the Project 9010 and also, you know, the the girl who, who turned over her first million. Uh, they all came from very dark experiences. Mm. And this is where, you know, I just, you know, held the hand and said, OK, you know, I can't, I, I, it's not possible for me to kind of work for free. Right. Um, I right. wish I could. I, I often make jokes and saying, oh, can I be like one of those, like, you know, cats that lay on the cushion and I can just kind of go like that and <laughs> like that and just... Someone else is paying for the cushion. Where's my food? Right. That would be nice. 
Um, and I, of course, have to pay staff and, and do things like that. So, but it's always, there's always a way to help people to yes. say, well, look, you know, is there a grant? Or if you did this, um, could you raise some money with that? It's yeah. about being proactive and, and, and help yes. and help. Them. Um, but also what I know is that when you, when you commit to an idea and you start doing the work, the money shows up. Yeah, exactly. And it's, um, very often any form of anxiety becomes the barrier because again all that energy is in flow when you believe and and you're doing things for the right intent that you know the soul and the universe picks that up and it will present what it is you need in order to do but when we are in anxiety or depression or fear we crunch down there is no fluidity there is no clarity and we're projecting that fear out rather than the invitation also, I agree with you, and congratulations on all your wonderful work. What a warrior of light you are. <laughs> wonderful. Um, well, I would like to give some people out there some tips. So one thing is about the state that you're in. If you find yourself slumping a lot or your head down, and you can get your family to take little photos of you or little videos when you're not watching, really check this out, because when you actually put your shoulders back, your head up, Yes. And you'll start feeling different. Another thing, um, and I remember, I remember, <laughs> well, I remember once um, there was a team and we were all sitting at desk and I said, right, everybody. Uh, and I put loud music on. I said, we're dancing for like 30 seconds. And they were like, Kinda. anyway, it went from being completely embarrassed and awkward to say, yes. is it the dance time yet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, because that kind of just shaking up the moving of energy and yes. just trying again. And I think those days too, some days when nothing is working and nothing is flowing or glowing, switch off. Yeah. Go to sleep. Go, go and have something to eat. Go to sleep. Start again the next day. I mean, these sounds so simple, but when you actually do it, it's very effective. I 100% agree with you because sometimes, you know, I, I've always got piles of work here to do. I'm uh, working on the next book. I'm still doing the audio for this book. Um, I'm going to be moving. I'm into other books as well. And uh, it, it's like I could look at all of that and go, oh, God, there's always something to do. But there are days where I have to put my mental health first and I go to do something and it goes, no, you're not. You're going to listen to music right now. You're going to watch things that fill your soul. You're going to go and do something for yourself right now, because if you don't, you're going to mess up. And I think it's yeah. listen to yourself, because if you force yourself to do something, when you feel that push against you, you will only have to end up redoing it because you're doing mm. it in the wrong state of mind. But you see, your soul is giving you the cues. It's yes. saying not now. Yep. yep. Put yep. that down. Yep. Yes. Not now. Yeah. Exactly. And and sometimes yeah. that's the synchronicity of, the, you know, in the, in the case of this book, I wanted to do it five years ago and it wasn't the right timing. And, and it had to be something that, OK, you're going to do it this year, which was last year and you're going to do it. And then it, all the people I needed for the book actually ended up being people I was interviewing for podcasts for something different. And then as we're talking, you've got to be in the book, you've got to be in the book. And it was perfect. The people that were in the book, the universe mm -hmm. knew what I needed to do. And said, now the time is right. Here you are. If we try to push things too soon, and I've done that, so I know it gets a pushback. No, the timing isn't right. So we really need to be in tune, don't we? In tune with the messaging that comes to us and pay attention exactly. to it. And, and also, too, when we, we, I always say test it, you know, like yeah. uh, with the people that I know and love. And, you know, and I actually really love all my clients. Um, actually, I don't do anything unless I love it. Exactly. Because if your heart oh, isn't oh, I, in it, no, if if people say, you know, who do you interview, Sarah? And I said, all those that come from the heart. I don't care. I have yeah. 18 different genres. I don't, 19 different genres. I don't care, you know, what the topic is. But is it coming from the heart? Because when exactly. it comes from the heart, you feel it. You don't just hear it. You feel it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. But what I think is very important for your audience, just to have a little think about is that um I, I love the saying is uh, rejection is god's protection mm -hmm. and, like and sometimes when it's a no just sit back and if we all if we all kind of remember a little bit things when 
we didn't get what we wanted or we were upset because we rejected. But then maybe, you know, even a couple of weeks down the line or a couple of years or whatever, you say, thank heavens I didn't get that. Thank heavens I yes. didn't do that. Oh, my God. If I had done that, oh, no, that wouldn't have been good. So this is there's something also very delicious and wonderful about sometimes not getting what we want, what we think. Um, and that's where I think it's good to kind of detach and take your yes. space, yes. even if it's for a day or two, and then have another look at it and not take things personally. And that's another thing, I think. Um, I think in some ways I wasted about 30 years of my life um, trying to, what did I do? What mistakes did I make? Now I'm going to out myself now. But yeah. I actually wasted 30 years taking other people's rubbish personally and thinking it had something to do with me. What a pile of rubbish. I hear you. I did too. I think it's a Libra thing. We're always trying to find the balance oh. in everything. And we're always trying to please people. I wasted too many years embedding yes, myself but... into a pretzel to be what other people wanted me to be and then only reject it because I wasn't who I was. And so I got so confused about who I you would was. be confused because yes. the thing is they they, they 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 were not clear with themselves it's exactly. got nothing to do with us exactly but the thing is I think it's also good to sometimes reflect and think oh yes. my goodness but the joy is that you actually did wake up and learn it so I think yes. it's just sometimes write down your learnings yeah and really appreciate them and um and I also think not caring is really good Write not, a book on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, it's not that you you don't care, but it's about detaching from things and, yes. and, and to remember that everybody has their own personal responsibility. But as humans and professionals, when we are being responsible for ourselves and what we're taking care of, just doing that makes everything so much better, you know? And, and also, too, with other people, if they want to love you, nothing's going to stop them exactly. if they like you they are going to show you if you somebody's doing business with you as soon as you uh, you want to qualify or disqualify and you ask them for money you'll see it straight away yes <laughs> because are they taking responsibility are they the third thing? and they're just some very clear clear steps that when you actually learn them it is a joy because life is just becomes a lot easier hell of a lot easier and it's that you know in the end life is about relationships first with yourself with your loved okay. ones around you but also with anybody that you do any business with you know I don't <laughs> want to if somebody posted something about today on Facebook I'm not here for marriage I'm not here to do this I'm not here to do that and I reposted it and added to it you know uh, no I'm not going to marry you I'm, I know I don't want to do business with you if this is the way you do business get to <laughs> know me if what you are pitching is something I need, then maybe I'll be interested. But you just throwing it in my face. Buy now, join now, this now. And you haven't even taken time to say hello. Why would I want to do business with you? Everything is a relationship, isn't it? And take the time oh, to absolutely. meet people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think, though, but that kind of behavior is very fear based. And when yeah. you track it back, it's usually people uh, trying to trying to do something to get money to pay for something. Yeah. And the thing is, there's a lot of people out there under terrible financial pressure. Well, actually, probably every human is in some way, whether you have a lot, a little in the middle or whatever it is. But it's up to us to, to kind of like just put that down and create um, activities that bring balance and harmony into our finances. Yes. You know, and then that's called and that's another thing that's incredible, being financially literate. Um, and, I, and as for the children, I'm a big believer that the school should be teaching children how to uh, be little mini accountants and, and balance their checkbooks from the age of five. Um, that is you know. one of the chapters in the book. It's like we do oh, not good. show, we don't teach children. And she takes it kind of from the age of 15 when they're looking at careers and everything else. You know, what is your relationship with money for a start? What is your family's relationship? Because that has an impact on you. And, you know, okay. and um, how how are you going to manage your money? And we don't teach that. And what mm. we are teaching through our societal um, going on is that, unless you make a lot of money you're not important and that's something mm, that we that, really need to look at right because you know you are not a dollar sign you are not no. a sign 
right? You see, that's 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 also not right no. for many reasons. But I think it's all about um, instead of like coming from a judgment point of view, it's about coming from a solutions point of view. Yes. Um, but my um, oldest grandchild, he's four. Uh, amazing and um, I'm training him up so when he comes to the studio I've got a film studio he comes in and I let him um, draw on the on the whiteboard and I say what's the strategy Jude and how are we going to get some pocket money today and how much is that are you going to get and what can you do with it Mm. you know so he's just saying well he, he always says he saves it because he says well I get the chocolate anyway so I can save it for a toy okay you know, and then that lovely feeling of the the money in his hand to put in the pocket. Um, well, and my then son, I was... my son was, you know, I'm talk- he is an entrepreneur. He owns his own restaurant, and he really is a businessman. But I knew that right from the word go, where he'd get his father to buy a whole load of candies, and then he would sell them from his shop at home, and he'd even sell them back to his father for double the price. <laughs> <That's> for him. <laughs> no, but he knew- and- but the thing is, for the children, it's like if they're in an environment where they can, this can be nurtured and, yeah. and they can be guided and channeled to, un, to understand what's going yeah. on. And I think the thing is, in, in humanity, people need to remember how resourceful they are. They don't need somebody to tell them they're good yeah. or somebody to tell them they can have the job or not. It's just like, you know, look at, you know, Girl Scouts have got it going on. They're selling their lemonades and cookies. Yes. They're not asking anybody. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that, you know, it, it, life again is relationship, but it's also a transaction. Right. Exactly. Because, you know, whether you're building a relationship in business, at some point, money is going to be a part of the conversation. You first want mm-hmm. to know whatever the relationship is, is it worth? Is there value in this? And then mm-hmm. when it does come down to money, you do know what you're paying for because you've already established the worth, right? And that, you know, it's great when you go to a grocery store, you know how much that loaf is worth, even though it's up 30%, which is ridiculous. But that's another <laughs> another point of view. <laughs> um, but when you're looking at another person, it's what they are offering. How much is it worth to you? How much will it help advance you? Do you feel at home with this person that you really feel there's a synergy that you they understand what it is you're trying to achieve? Then mm. the, the dollar is absolutely worth every penny or the pound is worth every penny. Yeah, exactly. But I think what's really important is for everybody in business out there is to make sure that they have something I call branded assets where they have their... their um, their services and their, their, their whether their product services um, listed and it's in a nice branded document and that they're very transparent with their clients yeah. and their clients feel totally heard. And the thing is, you know, that, that you don't have some, that you're th- shoving something down somebody's throat. Yeah. Um, it's about, like with my clients, they say, well, you don't sell anything. I say, absolutely, I don't sell anything. You know, we make a list of what do you need, why do you need it, why are you doing it, what would it take to get to do those steps and take it down step at a time, pay as you go, and um, mm. and then you go with the flow. Yes, <laughs> and I like works, that. And yeah, it, yeah, and it and it works magnificently. Um, and that's another thing with my agency, which is very different. Um, I, you know, I think it's ridiculous to have these huge goals and this huge feel, this big idea. Uh, you know, do pay as you go and do, and start completing things yes. that bring in the money. Well, but right? not only that, is that you have this huge, I want to be ba 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 ba. but as you pay as you go and you grow, you realize, no, that actually isn't my target. I've learned yeah. through this growth that that's my target. So if you, you know, gone somewhere and they're aiming for that, maybe that aim was not meant to be in the first place. So taking exactly. the step by step and allowing the growth it is allowing you the vision of where it really needs to go. And you know, another magical thing that I've seen with the work that I do a lot, I, I do um, something that's called a clarity and direction model. Uh, I don't always do it first, but mainly I do to make sure, because the thing is when people go through that process with me, I always say, if we're going branding and I'm in some events with you in the future. I want you to be able to look at my face and I can look at your face and we know what we mean. 
Yes. I don't have yes. to say anything to you right. because I am, uh, that's what I need and that's mm. what you will need. So when there's a clarity and direction um, model made, it's literally where we are uh, sketching out the journey that is needed and what is needed and what it will cost and what it will take to do. Mm. That by the time somebody does that with me, they know me very well by then. Mm. They will know themselves even mm. better. They'll also know all sorts of things to stop doing, which will save a fortune anyway. And then when you go on to the next thing, you know, you 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 don't have any elephants in the room. You don't have any yeah. questions or, or discomfort, and you you know that you're only doing things that is actually going to yield yeah. something yeah. very good. It's 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 like creating fertile ground all the time. Mm. So you create fertile ground, and then we put the seeds in, and then we garden, and then we go on to the next thing. Yes. So it's absolutely on purpose branding. There's no I love it. no. No acts, no accidents in on my desk unless you know, I spill my tea. <laughs> well, that, you know, this is something I've always said to people. You know, be careful what you seed. Really understand the seeds that you're planting, and then yeah. nurture and water those seeds, but don't tug on them yeah. until they're ready to grow. Right? And yes. That's the, but so many times people plant seeds. I want this. I want that. And then realize, oh, I got weeds. Right? Because you didn't take time to understand what it is you were seeding. And I think that's kind of something we need to really know isn't it what am i yeah. seeding yeah and also too you need to know what kind of earth whether you need lots yes. of sand in it whether it has acid not enough yeah. acid what kind of like chemical um kind oh, of yes. stuff that's needed because you know different flowers need different things and lights and things like that going back to nature but the thing is also to not to try to pick the fruits before the flowers are exactly appeared. It's Don't a it. yeah. yeah, yeah. You've actually got to do the gardening. You've got yeah. to do the nurture. But the thing is, there's lots of things that you can do. Like if we're taking gardens of analogy, like for example, if if we have to say your son's uh, restaurant is um his suppliers have all dried dried up, and we've got to help him, and he's got you know hundred hundred hungry people, but we have to grow the food right. But we do have some bread making materials in the cupboard. Okay, so you're making the bread. I'll grow some cress. You right. know how fast cress grows. Right. We could make cress sandwiches <laughs> from all of them. Right. We can even make our butter by churning it. From resourcefulness, we've got something quick that we can do. Now, of course, that's not what we want ideally in the restaurant. No. But no. the thing is, in businesses, you have these times Pivot. where the, the cash flow dries up. Yes. Or where you've got to actually, you've got to like, um, I said to somebody today, one of my clients, uh, they were like, um, like hyperventilating about money. And I was like, no, 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 you don't. It, it's a, please breathe because you're not taking it out of that purse. You're making a purse to that where money will appear and you take it out of that. Right. And then right. she said, oh, I wish I'd met you years ago. That's what I get a lot from people. I wish I'd met you <laughs> Because that's your gift is the way you see things. And like, you know, with my son, with his restaurant, um, three days before lockdown, he had snapped his Achilles heel. And I oh, went no. over to, to help him and help the restaurant, etc. And three days later, there he is in a cast. And he's been interviewed on TV. What are you going to do to pivot? And it's like, okay, well, we're just going to do takeout. And uh, because of the lesser staff, we'll minimize our, our menu. Um, and then that led to massive amount of catering and, and, and so many other things that it is don't panic. Stuff happens. Perfect. What can you do? You know, we focus so much on, oh, I can't do this. But what can you do? Focus well, on what the can is. Yeah, but here, this is something that I will say in when I'm working with people. Show me the pain. Show me your client's pain. Because where the pain is, come up with a solution and there's the money. Yeah. And there's the money for them mm -hmm. and you. So the thing is, people, it's like, it, it, no, panicking, panicking, it's um, often the very, these challenge times, they're for growth. It's about how you can actually step back and how you can be resourceful and what is the good stuff you can bring out or what is it that you need to see that you're not seeing because you don't know what you don't know.
And we it really do mean... ask other people what they're seeing, right? And you just know, start they... feeling feeling yourself. Yes. You know how many yes. people have so many great ideas and they talk themselves out of it. I know. Yes. I, I think know. the cemetery the cemetery is full of those people. Oh God! Absolutely. Wood of, wood of, I wish I had. Of, of, I wish. Yeah. I... Yeah. yeah. And they're, mm -hmm. they're they're sitting on their on their um on their tombstones, thinking, God, I wish I'd done that <laughs> yeah exactly and as you know I've always been a person of I don't know what I can do until I try and so it mm. might take me a little while to get around there then I'll go and try it and then find out if it's for me or not but how do I know if I don't try and I think if we're just willing to be more adventurous a little more wondrous uh, and understand we, we don't have to go into everything knowing it all but what we do need is a good team around us that when we don't know we've got someone to go to Right. Yeah. So you can, or even give people good people to ask. Yes. You know. Yes. Um. And I also, and also too, you know, I hear people kind of saying, "Oh, it's okay for you. You are so well connected, and you really need it's okay for you." And I go, "Well, you know what? Oh, uh, thank you for thinking of me in that way. But actually, have you ever heard? Have you ever thought how much work it was for me to?" to have all these relationships. Do you know how much yeah. talking I had to do and yeah. how much driving I had to do? Exactly. But the thing is, what I would encourage people to do, if they don't have like-minded people around them, if they don't have their dream team, set up a coffee club and invite yeah. them. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm actually, happen. I'm always talking about people having a podcast party, listening to a podcast and then everyone sharing their different perspective. That's because a very now, good idea. You've got a rounded picture now. If somebody mm. got this, somebody got that. And it just like, wow, you know, I didn't hear that. How did you hear that? And, and then that is the way we get the bigger picture when we're willing to share our perspectives. Exactly. Now, yeah, well, so it's you, a lot of fun talking to you. you know? Oh, it, with you too, my darling. You too. It's, now, it's I know a good that you're, <laughs> you're in the UK, and so obviously yeah. you deal with a lot of um, European and British people. Do you work with people virtually as well around the world? Oh, I've I've got clients all around the world. Yeah, I've got you know, and I've I have people. I've got people. I have people in America, in Bali, in Mexico. Texas, California, LA. I don't have anyone in the North Pole yet. You know, uh, <laughs> nobody in Canada. Come on, well, come on, Canada, Canadians. <laughs> yes, I've, 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 I've actually done media launch in Canada. That was very successful. I love Canada. Um, no, globally, and I also do speak fluent German. Oh wow! Yeah. So yes, I, you know, and I always say, why do the village when? Why do the village or stay in the village when you can do the whole whole world? I'm but, international. I mean, it's a global village, isn't it? You make villages yeah. everywhere you go. Yeah. yeah. That's the I beauty mean, of it. I don't. Uh, and luckily, I also think because of my um, days when I used to do a lot of design and building and go all over the world, leading teams of guys and carpenters and, and we used to do all this amazing stuff. You know, I'm, I'm that girl that will pick up the phone, get on an aeroplane and go too. Mm. I, I don't see distance like I wouldn't say oh I can't possibly go here I can't possibly do this we'll see well how can we make this happen but we have so much technology yes, you know exactly it's, it's a wonderful thing yeah so like somebody comes to you whether it's small or big or solopreneur or big project what is the first step that you take them through oh well first of all we have a really nice chat so we have um a discovery call and we both have you know we, if we have a cup of tea or whatever we want to drink uh, and we'll book in a little time and we'll have a chat and then based on that chat you know i'll give recommendations or that but usually what happens the person is saying well thank you for describing that so clearly i'll be ready to do that next month or can we do that now you right. know or, or or let me talk it over with my other half. And I go, no, 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 don't talk it over the other half. Get your the other half on the Zoom, are they there? Peter, Amanda, where are you? Would you like to join in? Usually they don't, right? Uh, but sometimes they do. So the thing is, it's about, and another thing too, I've never advertised, which is really weird. I've never advertised. People show up, and every time I, uh, the certain people show on my clients show up, you kind of see this little light of blue spark, and then I think, oh, there's another one to switch on. Here we go. 
Oh, yes, I, I love it. I mean, you were referred by Stephen uh, to me. So um, oh, I, I have thank publicists you. and I have people that refer and it and it is it's so nice to have that because, you know, they're in the same vibe tribe, right? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. And that's the beauty of it is knowing your vibe tribe. Now, your podcast starts next week, April 9th. All right. Um, tell us about that and where people are going to find it. Well, where people will find it, first of all, they'll find the link on my website, uh, which is my name. So all you have to write is my name and dot com. Can you spell um, your uh, name out for the people that are listening, please, Han? Absolutely. So the name is Daphne Delucci. So Daphne is D-A-P-H-N-E. Delucci is spelt D-I-L-U-C-E dot com. Now, if you put Daphne Delucci in Google, there's only one of me, and I do have like blonde hair, green eyes, and a cheeky smile, <laughs> and <laughs> you'll find me. <laughs> yeah, um, and also too, the the email is also very easy. It's my name, Daphne at DaphneDelucci dot com. Excellent. Yes, and of course so you're, you're on LinkedIn and you're on YouTube, and yes, uh, I'm, and I'm, and I've got uh, RawMediaCreative.com as well. Yeah, rawmediacreative.com, that's um, a company that um, I I have a partnership with there. Um, I have that too. In fact, I've got a few websites. Uh, but the thing is, I like to lead with my name and my website because find me and then I can, you know, show appropriate websites. Exactly. Um, like I still do design and building and all that stuff because also with some brands, you know, they want to, uh, do a brand refresh so they might have a boutique hotel or they might have a commercial building or it might be a startup it might be um, or it might be that gorgeous girl or guy who's uh, just started making candles and mm. they're getting all these orders or or they've got amazing following and they're making money a lot of money for someone else but they really could do with doing it for themselves yeah um you know it's you know, I'm just, I am so abundantly grateful for communication. So I, you know, I don't, I don't have any fixed thoughts on who should contact me. <laughs> right. It's all those that resonate. That's the point, right? Exactly. All those that resonate. And, you yes. know, this is the next step. Take the conversation exactly. and see if there is a yeah. synergy. And you don't know what you need from Daphne until you have that conversation. Right. And the inspiration begets invitation. When you're inspired by someone, you're invited to take action. And my motto exactly. is listen, learn and apply. Right. So exactly. Yeah. And also don't yeah. don't be don't be shy for a chat. And right. the thing is, um, you know, and I and I've also with this intention of the soul too, it, it will be um a wonderful thing because then I can advertise uh, uh webinars as well yeah. where people can come and have webinars for all sorts of wonderful things um and then they get their chance to do q and a's yes so people yeah. can ask in a group you know if they're not yeah. quite ready yeah. yes yeah. the thing is you know it, it's it, take the action it's nothing to to you know book a call and have that conversation maybe you're ready maybe you're not but maybe something that she says to you goes okay i'm not going in that direction i'm going to do this and i'll come back later you know, the thing is, you don't know what you need. You don't know if there's a connection until you make that call. So just book mm. a call with her and find out. But mm. I've interviewed an awful lot of branders where they are very much heavy on the branding, right, and mm. designing for you. But what Daphne does is it designs for you to represent you out there for somebody else's need. So if somebody That's... needs what you've got, that branding needs to represent what they need from you right um, exactly and and it, and it has to be universal language too and the thing is so you know it, i am very i'm very deep on relationships psychology science art but at the same time i'm a huge artist mm -hmm. and my clients say that my work converts mm. and i do my i do all my own art and graphics myself Wonderful. i don't send it off to some person to do Right. I actually do it myself. I have people that will populate things once yes. I've done them, you know, and I'll say, look, do you see that piece? Make that, that, and do that, and that. But it's all original artwork from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that means that it's going to be unique to you, right? Exactly. Nobody else is going to have it, and that's what you want. No. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
This has been utterly delightful. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing all your Thank wisdom. You. I love the approach that you have because it's truly encompassing the whole of the person to understand what they are doing, why they're doing it, whom it is for, and not just churning something out, uh, but really making that connection of representation, but also for them knowing, you know, what that next step is, or, you know, if even if they're going in the right direction or not. And this is what we need as business owners, is people not only supportive, not only have skills to share with us, but also feel they've got your back right? They've got your back. They understand what it is you're trying to do and they want to see you succeed. And uh, exactly. you know, we should all want to see each other succeed because exactly. we all benefit from it that way. Exactly. But I do have very artful, creative, inspiring conversations with everybody. And I know I can put my name to that. And I know that they, everyone would agree to that. But I also say to my clients, I'm your evergreen product. I'm here if you have the good days or the bad days. Yes. Because yes. what about, and you know, it's no good ha having someone on your team who doesn't want to know when, you know, you've had some massive rejection or somebody's copied you or tried to or somebody uh, who, somebody's found a fremony in your camp, mm. this kind of thing, or or something in your personal life affected you and you're just really having a shit day, excuse yeah. the French. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's important to be, yeah, it's important to be evergreen and be there in the good and the bad times. Yes. Otherwise, you don't have the masterpiece, dark exactly. shadow and light. <laughs> exactly, and you need the contour of both. It's extremely important. Exactly. So again, exactly. DaphneDelucci.com, you reach out there, you'll catch the podcast there. Uh, don't forget to tune in and continue to hear this wisdom that she is going to impart. Is it going to be weekly or bi-weekly? Or how, how often are you going to be doing your podcast? Well, you know, I am not sure. I think I'm just going to get going. And I will, take, I, will do, I will actually, I put myself on uh, in my own portfolio as one of my own brands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, So I'm going to see what Daphne thinks I should do. Yeah, this is so fun. Um, you know, I'm hoping that they will be... Um, weekly I, yeah I hope that they'll be weekly and they might be bi-weekly to sort out in the beginning um but you know I also want to reach out there, out there to the world if there are inspiring people who love to talk about their soul and how their soul has got them places please do contact me with interest I, on being a guest I've got yeah. loads of people that you would love absolutely yeah, yeah. and because and you know, for me, the soul and the heart is is the very yes. core of our being. So, yeah. But this is so important because the thing is, is I've always been that person who's who wants to shine a light on other lights mm. and give people a voice and a chance. Yes. Well, they don't need to give them a voice. They have a, cho a voice yes. already. Yes. But yes. to help. Give them the help, microphone. <laughs> well, give them yeah. the audience. The yeah. lovely people can hear them. Yeah, exactly. It's connectivity. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. You know, we need it so much in this world right now. Uh, we, you know, when one succeeds, we all succeed. And that's the important thing to know, because it elevates our consciousness, it elevates us to a higher frequency. And that is where the healing is. That's where the love is. So if you love what you do, and you love whom you serve, then you are extending that love and that vibration out into the universe, which helps heal our planet and heal us human beings. So it's very important that each and every exactly. one of them step up to that. Couldn't have, said it, couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Daphne. It's been wonderful having you here, fellow Libran. We've kept things in a nice seesaw here today. And uh, for everybody else out there, you're looking at branding and realize branding is your calling card. It is the invitation. It is where people take notice of you. And it's not just the beautiful graphic. It's what's beyond that graphic that represents and it's uh, this is something that you need to know so reach out to Daphne and let her help you on her way and don't forget to listen to her podcast which you will find on her site from April 9th so to everyone else out there have a good day bye for now we hope that you enjoyed the show there are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening.
We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.